Hello YouTube and welcome back in Flight Sim today. Uh, we are in DCS World and we're going to take a look at setting up an air-to-air -air tanker uh, for any mission that you wish to create. So let's go ahead and go into the mission editor. Because of that saying, you can set up a tanker on any map uh, that there is. Uh, we have two different types, or two different methods I should say, of air-to-air -air refueling. We have the uh, probe and drogue, which is which is what we can see on the F-18, or we have the boom method, which we can see on the F-15 and F-16. Uh, so let's go ahead and select a tanker. So uh, let's go down to a KC-130. So you can see we have a KC-130, KC-135, and KC-135 MPRS. The MPRS is the probe and drogue version and the standard KC-135 is the boom version. So let's go ahead and select the KC-135. Let's go ahead and just plonk it on the map. And let's select the... Um, so let's go ahead and first and name it. So let's just call it Tanker 1. Tanker 1. We we'll do the same for the pilot. See so here, you can select the nation that you wish. Um, yeah, tail number. For the purpose of this video is not relevant. Radio. This is also we want to be able to contact the tanker so it knows that we're inbound and we want fuel. If you can't do that, then the, you won't get any. You won't get anything back from the tanker, and you won't be able to take on fuel. So we want to make, ensure that that is ticked. And you can set the frequency to whatever you desire. Again, for the purposes of this video, it is not relevant to change that. Uh, we can set the call sign. Here's, it's, if you have more than one tanker in the game or in your mission, then it's quite handy to have um, different call signs. So we have Texaco, Arco, and Shell. And then we can change the numerical value as well. So we've got Texaco 1-1 one, one at the minute. Uh, down here, we have... Number one is what the mission is for the aircraft. So in this case, it's, it's going to be a tanker. And then we can set a air-to-air -air TACAN for it. So this makes it easy if you, um, rather than trying to find it with your radar, you can just punch in your air-to-air -air TACAN frequency, uh, or channel I should say, and you will be able to find your tanker on your HSI. So change it to whatever you like. I like 55. You can have it as either X-ray or Yankee. You can also select whether you want to receive a bearing from the TACAN. I always have it checked in. Um, it just makes it easier. Uh, call sign as you want it to be displayed on your either your hood or your HSI. So I keep it as TKR, tanker for short. And this is the important part where it says unit. We have to assign it to tanker 1, the aircraft that we named up here. Otherwise, it won't work. So let's go ahead and set the altitude for about 15,000 feet. So that's how we want uh, the altitude we want the aircraft to start at. And then let's go ahead and just put in some waypoints for the aircraft to fly around. So we have two options for the tanker. We can either have it flying a racetrack pattern. So here it'll go from, uh, we can set it from waypoint one, it'll fly to waypoint two, turn around and then fly back to waypoint one and then repeat once again. Or we can just have it in a circle so then it will just orbit around a certain waypoint, whichever one we decide to put it on. If you want to do a racetrack pattern, it's important to remember, so in this case we have waypoint 1 and waypoint 2, it's important to remember that we have to set it to the waypoint before the last at least. So here we'd have to set uh, the racetrack pattern to go from at waypoint 1, so it'll fly to waypoint 2 and then back to waypoint 1. If we do it at waypoint 2, well it wouldn't be able to do it because there's no waypoint after it. It can only do it after, not before. So if we go back over here, back to waypoint one, we're going to click down add, perform task, and then we want orbit. Now there is a refueling option there, but we don't want to use that. What that option is, is if you want the aircraft to go and refuel, not to be the refueler. So we go click ahead and click orbit. Now you can see we have racetrack pattern selected or circle pattern there if we want. I, I prefer racetrack. It's easier to try and uh, formate and then refuel if it's flying straight and level rather than in a constant uh, turn. Airspeed, let's just bump that up to 350 knots. Altitude, 15,000 feet is what I want the tanker to do the orbit at. And then we can go ahead, we can set 
certain conditions to it. So uh, this is more linked to, you know, if um, a flag has been activated, then the tanker will then perform the orbit. Or we can just go ahead and do a stop condition. So uh, this is what I usually do, it's my personal preference. So I'll just set that to one hour, zero minutes. So hours, minutes, seconds. Uh, and then it'll continue to do an orbit for one hour or until it hits its bingo fuel and then it'll return to the nearest airbase or the uh, its original home base if you set it to depart from an airfield prior to starting the refuel. Now it's worth noting that um, as far as I'm aware all orbits are left hand orbits. Um, for the purpose of this video it's not really important but if you have um, triggered areas perhaps you might have a trigger zone up here that if um, a blue force enters that trigger zone then something happens um, so if it's a left hand pattern it might be okay but if it's a right hand pattern then it might intercept that trigger zone again for the purpose of this video it's not really relevant um, and that's it really so as you can see this is uh, the tanker so if it's a MRPRS version it'll have the pods on the wing uh, for your F-18 uh, or any other probe aircraft and if it's uh, just a standard KC-135 these uh, pods won't be there you'll just have the boom at the back and that's it really for it so let's go ahead and have a look in game so I'm not interested about saving it Fine. and here we go we have our KC-135 don't worry about it if you can't hear the aircraft at the minute I've got the volume turned down so it doesn't drown me out too much. So as you can see, the aircraft's at 15,000 feet now, traveling at 340 knots. And it'll, it's now flying towards its first waypoint. Once it's at that first waypoint, it'll begin its uh, racetrack pattern. And it's just a case of um, flying up behind it, using your radio menu and selecting the aircraft and then requesting to join that's as straightforward as I can make it. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time.